Hello, welcome back to my studio. A few weeks ago, I did a video about using pattern to help get started with any painting. In this lesson, I'm going to show you a painting that I've started with a strong pattern and how I develop the painting. So stick around and watch me put together a painting for you using oil paints, but you can use acrylics for this as well. Okay, now a lot of you got a lot of use out of the idea of using a pattern, but I've also had quite a few artists ask me to just elaborate and go further with the, the topic. So I thought I would just show you how I go about creating a painting. Going straight in with some cerulean blue and white to get in the sky in a good thick paint using a big number eight brush. Adding a little bit of alizarin for some violet around the edges of the tree. Gets a little bit of extra volume to the tree as well. And then into the lights of the tree. Already established with the pattern where the lights are going to go. But I'm going to add a bit as I finish off the painting. Starting off with big light strokes. Lots of paint and then moving into the darks and middle values. Still sticking with the big brush. Stick with the large brush for as long as you can. It gives you the best painterly effects. Ultramarine blue for the deep dark colors. You can see I'm mixing these on the palette one into the other, just dragging them into each other to adjust the value and adjust the temperature. All of these elements that I bring into the painting, I've provided um, information and how-to techniques in previous videos. So just look up color temperature on my channel. There's some good lessons there about color temperature. And then into some of the little details, but I won't spend much time on that. I just want to suggest the oranges in the tree with a bit of red light and cadmium yellow, touch of white. Put those in as a suggestion. I'll add little shadows to them as well. I don't want them to stand out too much, but they are there. And some cool cerulean, bit of alizarin, some white. And I'm going to start just playing around with the colors of the wool. Adding a bit of burnt sienna to this mix to make it a little gray. But I think I prefer the a stronger violet. You can adapt the color as you wish. In a previous version of this painting, I turn the walls into a sort of a cool mustard color. In this case I'm sticking with the sort of violet theme and that's going to make the yellows in the tree really stand out. It's going to also make the blue door stand out very nicely. I've kind of decided I'm going to make this painting about the, the door ultimately and I'll call it the blue door. So I'll get some good thick paint on that in the later stages. Now, most of this um, scene is in shadow, but I'm going to bring some filtered light into it. That means adapting the color temperature on the wall of the house here and there, adding a little bit more white and alizarin. And we'll see as I go. Um, that is a bit of improvisation, can be dangerous, <laughs> but uh, try it if you want to. A few little scar holes in the tree, some cool blues in there and keeping it very loose and sort of fresh. This type of painting can get pretty static if you just follow it step by step, try to copy the photograph. In the courtyard, sort of grubby colors in the courtyard and 
Well, I have to try and turn that into something. I'm going to have that strong shadow in the bottom right and foreground. And I'm going to bring in a few filtered light effects over the path. Little highlights here and there. Back into the tree and these strong bits of light accentuating the sides of the tree and as the light sort of filters through I'm sort of creating that effect so now we'll get a few light bits on the wall and sort of corresponding with the light on the tree. This is all part of that improvisation I was talking about and uh, worth a try but if it doesn't work out well you can always scrape it off and have another stab at it. A few strong uh, light effects on the path and also hitting the door frame, part of the door frame. The courtyard, I don't want to actually get distracted by that, so keeping it fairly nondescript, just putting some vague shapes there, and then the focal area is the door and the light around the door, and a few lights and reflected lights hitting the little tree trunks, very thin tree trunks here. So a bit of dark, a little bit of light created with burnt sienna and a, a bit of yellow and then the dark blue tree trunks mostly ultramarine and burnt sienna to get that sort of burnt umber look there's a little wall, garden wall in the background suggesting it very loosely, just an impression of it and getting a bit of that purple into the wall so it just stands apart from that little wall. Few details. The painting is pretty much there already. I, I've got to just give it a bit of um, a bit of life and some color into it. Now these lights in the pathway and courtyard very much improvised just trying to get them to correspond with the light hitting the tree and to bring some interest and a bit of spark into the foreground of course it can look completely wrong as well so I fiddle with it a little I think I'll leave it at that and get some of these nice warm lights around the door and the sort of detail around the door, a little bit fiddly to be honest. But uh, just suggest it, get it down pretty quickly. In this case I've swapped out the brush for a number 4 round bristle brush. Which just helps me define these smaller shapes a little more. It's not a tiny brush, but a bit more control where I need it. And refining the sh shapes on the wall a bit, and now I can get into the door. Cerulean blue, white, touch of alizarin for the darker areas, and getting some nice thick juicy paint on the, the door. Give it a bit of texture, some interest to catch the eye. Just a few little scar holes letting that door show through, um, getting a bit of continuity for the eye to follow. And then I'll bring a few more lights into that, the, the glass, suggesting reflections into the glass of the door. And picking up some of that light on the, the foreground. So hopefully it all reads correctly. 
and get this um, pattern around the door bit of a nuisance to be honest but I will uh, persevere and try and get those squared up, squared up there very subtle details in the doors there's little shadows I don't want to overstate them a lot of dark lines so slight temperature variety in the door color and now some highlights up in the tree just to bring those foliage elements forward so they read like they're in front of the door but more clearly I think re-establishing some of the darks always a good thing towards the end of the painting you lose some of the dark so get those back in they give all the strength to the painting some darks at the tree trunks as well just a bit of uh, burnt sienna and ultramarine to get this nice dark in the foreground I don't use burnt umber just use ultramarine and burnt sienna and that does a better job in my opinion and then um, that's pretty much there um, a few little touches of blue and uh, I'm going to bring a bit of blue into suggesting a few little shadows also um, a bit more blue I think shaded into the tree yeah a bit more paint getting some really nice impasto just one more pass I think on the door there I think that should do it so it really brings that door forward lovely old details on these these doors and they usually are coated with many many layers of paint anyway from all the decades they've been around take a last look add a few highlights now where needed and some blue behind the tree just to bring that tree forward again and that's pretty much there I think the trees has been done very loosely I didn't want a very tight ball of foliage there that's it's all loose it's kind of impressionist suggestion of a few branches here and there and a last little highlight or two on the tree trunk and we're pretty much done so I'll sign this off and uh, let you decide did it work out?